suit up, strap in, warm the tires, and leave on yellow. Time for the Mitsu Times Podcast. Presented by MitsuTimes.org, the home of the fastest Mitsubishi cars. With your host, Josh. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Josh from Mitsu Times. Today, my guest is Rich Ong, the owner and driver of the sweetest Underglow 1G you've ever seen. How are you doing today, Rich? I'm good. What's going on, buddy? Oh, man. I'm glad I get a chance to talk to you. I feel like I've been following you around the country this year, so uh, it's good that we get to sit down and actually do this. Absolutely. So uh, let, let's talk about the setup on your car. Even though it's, I know it's had a couple setups even this year uh, for different events. Let's talk about the setup that uh, you ran sevens in. Uh, so we got a bullet block by RRT. It's a seven bolt. Uh, we got a two G trans stage four by uh, Mr. Aaron Gregory. He has all uh, his magic tricks in there. It's anything you could buy is in there. You know, the usual uh, JB drum, Kigley drum, and all that goodness. Uh, what else is in there? Uh, you got Magnus transfer uh, T case built by Boostin. It's got all the billet pieces available. Um, you got. Head games, CNC ported heads. They're the ones who do all my heads. We also have uh, JMF intake. It had a FP Force Performance 4580 Turbo. Haltech Nexus R5. Mm. The IC7 Dash. That's a pretty sweet setup. It cleans things a lot. Cleans everything up inside the car, which I liked. Uh, let's see. We also have, uh, all the Kigley stuff in the motor. You got it. That's like standard issue these days. You got to right. have the springs and, and all that jazz, uh, tile gates, waste gates, blow off valve. Uh, my injectors are, uh, prime primaries are, uh, ID 2600s. My secondaries are billet atomizer 5500s. We got a Waterman pump, and we got a custom T4 divided manifold made by Mr. Don Bangs at PSI Performance. He's also the one who uh, is in charge of all the fabrication, which uh, everybody loves and compliments on his Absolutely. work. He's like, he's like a metal artiste, <laughs> you can say. Uh, drive shaft shop, drive shaft. Axles, 3000 GT rear, the Evo spec cover. Uh, late edition is the uh, Nat Fab rear subframe, which is bulletproof so far. Really nice stuff. Yeah. Um, Full time fabrications did my cage and then uh, carbonetics, everything else. I mean, uh, whatever's from carbonetics basically is on the car. Heck yeah, definitely one of the uh, the cleanest cars out there. It's almost, uh, it, I mean, it's definitely good enough to be a show car and a race car. That was the goal. I didn't want some just slap together thing with right. you know that looked like it was just bolted on and in, in with no really uh, cleanliness to it. So I was big on trying to make that happen, and luckily I was able to put those pieces together and make it make it happen. That was. Uh, uh, Pro Dipper out of New York. He's the one who did the paint on that. It's okay. actually a, a spray dip called Auto Flex, which is peelable, huh. which is pretty cool. Most people think it's paint, or some think it's a wrap. It's it's neither. It's kind of in between, but it's really cool stuff. And you're able to do crazy things and colors with with it. And then I I like the fact that it doesn't have any uh, ends to it, like on a wrap. Like oh yeah, I see people's wraps, and that that bothered me. Like you could. Oh, they're they're pretty good, but you could see the the ends of it and the wraps around the fenders and hood and stuff. Yeah. Or when so you that, open the door, it just looks like crap. Yeah. So this guy, it's sprayed, so it, it doesn't have any of that stuff. So it's really clean. So that's why I went to him. So Rich, what is it that got you into the one G in the first place? Probably the 
the look of it and probably the the rarity of it. I like that there weren't a lot of them around. Uh, the look was definitely it caught me from the first time I got into them. The two G's were kind of they were kind of like you know those were like. For me, those were like the girl cars, like the strippers had, the, like all the dancers had those kind of cars, like, you know, not that they're, they're not, I mean, Devin's car is no stripper car, trust, right? But I mean, those, those, those didn't appeal to me as much. Gotcha. So I said, oh, I said, you know, there's not a lot of nice clean 1Gs out there. I said, this is the platform. This is what I want to do. So you've, you've been into these cars for a long time. When is it that you uh, took this car and made it into a, a serious race car? Uh, serious was uh, 2019. That was uh, the decision was made. Like, okay, I, I've, I've been to one shootout and I've been to one shootout where I raced and I was just like, all right, like, we need a serious car. Like, none of the nine, like, nine seconds was cool, but it, it didn't really do anything for me. Like, I wanted to, I wanted to run with the big boys and I was like, oh man, like, this is the only, this is like one of the only things you can do in, in a hobby and run with the big boys. Like you can't just go, you know, sign up and go play with the Yankees or, you know, play with any kind of professional sports. But like in here, you can actually line up with like the fastest, right? If you, if you have the means of building a capable car, you can line up with Devin and Aaron and, and all those guys, Wohler and you know, at the time, Jeff Bush, like, the only thing that's keeping you from a car, like you can't just do that in any other sport, right? So that's really what, like, I was after. I was like, I want, I want to be able to just line up with these guys and Kigley at the time. Like, these guys are like, you know, the greats, so to speak. And so for me to able to to do that, it, it's that was the goal, you know. Was that that was the original <laughs> goal then when you when you first started getting serious with it? Yeah, I was like, I was like, I need a car that's gonna run sevens and and be at the finals with these guys. Like that, that's what, that's what really got me excited. Heck yeah! Twenty nineteen, we we got got made the decision to go all out and put everything I can into the build, and that's what we did. I started mapping out what I'm gonna put into it. Started acquiring all the parts, and called up Don. I said, listen, this is, this is what I want to do. These are the parts I want to use. This is kind of the layout I want to go after. And he just made it all appear. And, you know, did it perfectly. It, it's, it, yeah, it's so amazing. I, I, I was like, you know, I kind of want this look over. And he just took it. And next thing I knew, you know, whenever I showed up, it was just like, wow, that's exactly what I wanted. You yeah. know? So he, we're definitely on the same wavelength. Heck yeah. It, it's it's almost crazy that a car that looks so good can go so fast. Yeah, I mean, I, I I'm surprised. You know, it's it's uh, it's not. I don't want to say it's easy, but I mean, it's easier. It's quicker than I. It happened quicker than I expected. Yeah, for sure. Know? So 2019 we started. 2021 it took about a year and a half to build. And 2021, when we finally had it together, we tried to run it at a couple events, like Hail Mary shootout, and it was just never right. We went through a few motors. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, you know, trial and error, just motors not working out and stuff like that. And so we never really got to make full passes. We, you know, we used to joke around that it was the, uh, it was, a, it was just a 60 foot car because after 60 <laughs> foot, I, I would have to pull over every time. It was almost like muscle memory, like 60 foot, I would just pull over wow. just because, you know, so it, it kind of sucked. But I mean, in this stage, like I figured out how to have a blast at the track without racing, yeah. you know, it was, like, it was like, I didn't even need my car. Like we were having so much fun just hanging out with the, with the boys and, and whatnot. We, racing was kind of like a side benefit of it. For sure. It yeah. just, we just... Whenever we get together, we just have a great time. So I'm lucky. I'm lucky with that aspect. You've definitely yeah, it was, you've perfected the pit party. Oh, I mean that's kind of like half my program right there, right? <laughs> so half of it, half of my attention goes into racing. The other half goes into the pit party. So I'm always trying to make sure that everyone has a good time and people are enjoying themselves. And, yeah. And that's what it's all about. That you know, yeah. if you're not having fun at the track, then like something's wrong there. Like you got to meet 
meet the right people, hang out with the right you know group of guys and girls, and and there's there's more to it than just the racing part, you know. Yeah. For sure. Stuff stuff's gonna break. It's always gonna break. So you got to figure out what happens when stuff breaks. Like you still gotta have a good time. <laughs> it's like and, and the racing ends supposed, at some point. To, yeah, this is supposed to be like the uh, stress reliever, the hobby of your life. And right. You gotta enjoy it somehow. Don't let it take you out. Exactly. So, Rich, over the uh, since 2021, when it when it was done, what different setups have you had in it to kind of play around with? To uh, you know, not you. We already talked about what it took to run the seven second pass, but have you had any other setups that that really stood out and, and worked really well for you? Uh, I mean, number one, the turbo, the you know, force performance. Robert can't thank him enough. He, you know. He gave me a turbo that was definitely capable. He just had to make the other pieces work. Yeah. Uh, the next step was the engine that Wraith built. It was just rock solid and no issues, and it's kicking ass so far. Nothing but, you know, good things to say about him. He's actually the only uh, guy that's called, you know, spoke to me and asked me how things are. How's the motor running? How's it holding up? Any issues? Do you need anything? Do you need me to bring anything to the shootout? Like, for him to do that, he's the first person, like, in the industry that I kind of, like, asked those questions, and I was blown away that the fact that he checked up on his stuff. Yeah, that really sure. impressed me. So that's kind of rare. Um, the other part of the puzzle was uh, Aaron and uh, Hal at Dynasty. I mean... Uh, I wanted someone who was in the sevens, who had the experience and the knowledge, and you know he, he's they're the best of the best. Heck yeah! You know the hard part is you know they're in Kentucky, I'm in Jersey, so or you know you, if you want to be the best and run with the best, you gotta you gotta do what it takes, right? Absolutely. So I towed the car and towed my whole rig uh, to Louisville. Left it there and had them do it. And then uh, when it was done, when they were done tuning it, I flew back, picked it up, and drove it to the shootout last year. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it was hard work. It took me, uh, I think, 14, 15 hours to get there. But that's that's set the basis for everything else, right? So that was, the that tune was, was done. The, the motor at the time didn't really hold up to what we, were, what we wanted to. Um, but we got the two bass tuned down. Uh, finally, when we put the RRT engine in, it was ready to roll, and we were finally ready to, to start making some passes, you know, farther than 60 feet. Yeah, for sure. So we uh, picked the track day, a uh, track rental day at ATCO in, here in Jersey, and Aaron flew up, and uh, we had the whole day to knock out some passes. So the, our goal was to obviously shake it down, make sure nothing fell off. After that, we were going to start turning it up and see if we could qualify for a uh, World Cup. So that was the goal of the day was to uh, qualify for World Cup. And it took about uh, six passes on the sixth pass. I had to go pick up my kids. And I was like, listen, I, I can't be late. You know, they're waiting for me. I was like, Aaron, jump in the seat and uh, do it. Do your thing. So, uh, you know, I did five passes. We were running eight o's we or no what we were doing the goal was a five i think it was a five one eight and the eighth or something uh -huh. like that we were just we were so close and uh i left the track and about 20 minutes later he uh texted me he said dude we did it <laughs> so aaron actually got the qualifying pass in my car uh in the eighth mile and then uh that was on sunday and then uh, Tuesday, I went back to the track to see what we could do. And that Tuesday, uh, first uh, first pass, I think, was an 8.0. Second pass was the, uh, I think it was 7.97 or something like that. Man. And that was uh, about eight passes total to get into the sevens. That's awesome. It was uh, it was pretty ridiculous when you, when you think about it. it for sure. Uh, <laughs> like, you're like, whoa. Like, People have been trying for decades. Yeah, people. It takes people. You know, I don't have to tell anybody how long it takes to try to get in sevens, but for us to do it in two, two days, uh, you know, eight passes or whatever, it's, it's pretty sick. That that was like 
Wow, that was just mind blowing. You know, when I hit, when I my first eight second rip was uh, at the Hail Mary Derby, and that was kind of just like, I don't know, it didn't do anything for me. Everyone was going crazy, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, uh, yeah, that's great. Like, I don't know, it just had, it was so flat to me. It was like, it felt like a ten second pass. I was like, oh, that's okay. Like, oh, that's pretty cool. And I, I knew, I knew, you know, I was like, man, I, I need to hit sevens. Like, this eight's not it's doing anything. Gotta have like, yeah it was like you know it's such a good goal but it's it was like all right all the all the real guys are running sevens like there's no, i, I want to run sevens with them so i was excited to make that happen heck yeah so so after you did run that seven rich what did it what does that seven second pass mean to you for you know being into these cars for so many years i mean i'm i'm in the top 10 of your list like that was like like i must have looked at that thing like 30 times like I'm in the top ten. Like, you can't change it. You're in the history books. Yeah, right? for sure. Oh, like I'm in the top ten. I'm in the top ten. Like, look at these names right here. Like, I, I passed all, you know a handful of names, and now I'm facing like uh, Jeff Bush, Kigley, uh, Montgomery, like Holland, like these names. Like, these these guys are all the OGs, and I'm right. sitting right here with them. You know, for sure. That's crazy. Past Kevin Jewer, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it, it, it's 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 been such a cool ride. The fact that like I looked up to these guys, and I used to just you know, my first one or two shootouts, I you know, I'm just in the stands watching these people, you know, <laughs> and now I'm like you know, hanging out with them and you know, eating with them. Right, for sure. And it's 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 surreal for me to for, to come, you know, and it was pretty quick too. I mean, my first shootout was probably. 2015 just watching you know yeah and now here i am in in, in, in the, the thick, thick of it, it. yeah yep. sure so rich what's the next goal because obviously once you run the seven you know you gotta yeah so now and now the next goal is to start start climbing that list now now we're gonna try and make some moves so the you know one step at a time one day at a time but i mean ultimately you know i'm gunning for that 720 I, I want to be right behind Aaron. That's the goal. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I'm sure people have seen already, but just that World Cup, you uh, got a personal best. So, you know, you're yep. definitely uh, you're you're getting in the stride here of what the potential of the car could be. Yeah, it's it's uh, getting quicker and quicker every time out. You know, at, at the shootout, we ran you know four complete passes, all in the sevens. The other passes are all you know broken parts, but. That's all good. But all the full passes, they were all seven second passes. So for me to do that, you know, seven second passes at the shootout in front of everybody, like, I was in heaven. Yeah. That was great. And then after that, we go to World Cup and make a couple more seven second passes. I mean, man, I'm on cloud nine at this point. I'm really playing. Turning, turning those lights on, yep. hitting them with the lights uh, in front of, I don't know how many was that, 40,000 people? A ton. That was uh, that was tight. That was that was nuts. And was really playing with the big boys there. Yes. Now you're like, this is the main stage, right? Like right. just looking at all those people. I'm like, God, I'm looking out. You know, sitting in my car, looking out the windshield, like looking to the left, looking to the right. I'm like, God, damn, this is a lot of people. Like, you know, <laughs> nerve wracking to say the least. <laughs> this episode of the Mitsu Times podcast is brought to you by A R H Automotive home of the world's quickest 428-powered car. ARH Automotive is your one-stop shop. They specialize in fabrication but can handle everything from full builds to simply getting the parts you need. Contact them for all your performance needs in the Clearwater, Pinellas, Florida region or on Facebook at ARH Automotive LLC or visit ARHAutomotive.com. So, Rich, I think we all already know the answer, but if you could do this build all over again, you think you would do it all the same? Absolutely. I wouldn't change a thing. I mean, all the broken stuff like that don't even matter. It's like Yeah. Just part yeah, of it. I wouldn't I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah. We laugh we have so many laughs about broken parts. Like that's half of it almost, you know. <laughs> you just sit back, laugh and have a good time. I mean, the people I've met, you know, the friends I've met and family, new family that I, you know, I have. It's just amazing. Yeah. It's such a good group of guys that you meet from a car. It's like they say, you know, everyone says it, the people that you meet. It's just, Totally, you know, totally. Make it all worth it. Worth it. Yep. Yep. 
So, Rich, you've definitely, you know, we talked about broken parts uh, here and there. Um, you definitely had some some setbacks, and, uh, you know, you're learning some, some weak points of this setup. Um, after all of that, you know, breaking parts and, and doing this and doing that and spending money, you know, we say that it's all part of it, but what is it that, that keeps you pushing it? Like, well, you know, this is broke, but... Uh, we're going to build it back better because you're not the kind of person to just put some parts in there temporarily. You're going to do the best that you can, buy the best parts you can, have it built the best that it could possibly be, and and keep going. What What is it about this car that motivates you to do that? I mean, one of the biggest motivations is my kids, you know. I, I, learned, I learned through them not to quit, you know. People that don't know, my two youngest boys have Down syndrome. And they have been faced with challenges and, and things in life that they have no question about. They just keep pushing forward because that's all they know how to do. Yeah. So that, that motivates me to work on the car. Whenever I'm, I'm like contemplating, oh, I don't feel like doing this or changing this, taking out the motor, like I think about my boys and I'm like, oh, you got to do it. Yeah. There's, no, there's no other option. You got to do it. So they're the ones who push me to do all this and, and to be the best person that I can be. So they they push me and and your list pushed me. I mean, awesome. I, I want to say I want to see my name on the top of the list. There's no reason why I can't do it. Heck yeah, you know. So if you have the means to, you just keep going. There's no other option. Yeah. I, I like when people say I can't do this. I can't. Do it. You can't go run faster than eights or you know, elevens, tens. You know, I kind of skipped all those like in between numbers and. They're like, you can't do that. Like you gotta run. They're like, no, what do you mean? I can do whatever I want. Right. Know? So. I'll keep pushing this car till I absolutely can't. You know, if everything that breaks, we figure out w- how to fix it. There's things in the works that we're we're doing to make these trans better and and uh, fix the planetary issue. Hopefully, in the future, and just keep keep throwing bigger turbos at it and letting it fly. Heck yeah! So you see what actually the final number is. So, Rich, uh, let's talk about some off-season upgrades. You got any off-season upgrades planned that you can tell us about? Yeah, we got some uh, weight reduction that we're going to do. Uh, we're going to lighten up the rear a little bit. Uh, right now the car is uh, 2415 without me in it. So we're going to see if we could shave off another 100 or so. We do the back. We're going to put uh, anti roll bar in the back. Don's going to hook it up. Uh, got new uh, suspension going in. We got IDS coilovers in the back, and then uh, some new uh, BCs in the fronts. And chase some numbers. We're gonna try out this Apex eighty three eighty five just to see what we can do with it, and freshen up the motor with a new one. And that's about it. Yeah. Maybe add one or two more. Uh, Street glow tubes to make it a little brighter underneath. That's about it. Got to do that. Yep. So, Rich, yep. Uh, this this car has been around for a while. It, it was green at one point, and uh, you've had some other cars along the way. So, let, is there any uh, Mitsubishi's in your past that you want to talk about uh, that that you know motivated you to push this car? Um, first one was, I think, a 93 I bought off eBay. It was, uh, the maroon color with the, uh, porno red interior. Heck yeah. That had, a uh, 20G in it and a couple other things. That was, like, you know, uh, I can't even remember. What was it? A 2G02 housing with the, uh, 2G manifold. And, uh, you know, everything was still clean. Was, everything was powder-coated, repainted bay. I... I always needed a repainted bay. I couldn't just let, you know, that bothered me. Yeah. But I didn't have the money at the time to, to go fast with it. It was just kind of driving around the drive around the block and hope it stayed together type thing. <laughs> and after that, then I had the uh, another one, which is uh, a white one at the time. And, you know, that went pretty fast with, you know, the problem for me is I went to my first shootout. So I thought I had a cool street car and it was capable, you know, had a had the uh, HX35 on it. I, you know, I thought it was all tough and everything. And yeah. then I, sh- I went to my first shootout and it was game over. I saw these people's builds and, you know, I was like, 
oh, I don't need a street car. Like that's waste. I'm wasting my time. Like I need, I need a track car. Yep. So that's what that's what changed the game for me. It was attending a shootout and seeing all these all these wild cars like STMs, uh, Evo at the time. Like that was that was like that hit hard with me. Yep. There were their white Evo. I was like, man. That's that's what did it for me was the shootout. I had a T67 2G all-wheel drive, and I, I thought I ran my town and then went to the shootout. And I was like, okay, this this car's actually pretty slow. <laughs> yeah, that definitely. I, I, everyone had these sick builds. They're so clean. I was like, ah, oh, man, I, what am I doing with these floor mats? Like, come on. <laughs> Get this out of here. So, Rich, what are the goals for 2023? 2023? uh Gonna try to do some cool things. Uh, got nice ones. Gonna f- follow us to the shootout, and uh, we'll try to shoot some video. Follow me around, and me and Aaron try to uh, make a little documentary or something cool, so that we could have a good uh, good memory for. Uh, I'm gonna try to attend. I don't know. Supposedly there's a reunion event in Bradenton. I'm gonna do a few IFOs, the ones that are within. Uh, Driving distance for me is probably, you know, I'll, I'll drive up to eight hours for that. So maybe the uh, New York ones and Ohio and uh, New England one. Uh, Chris Miller has a new series with a 73, uh, 73 millimeter uh, turbo limit on there. So now that I, that's at ATCO. So I'll hit a few of those, hopefully. And then uh, shootout FL2K and uh, World Cup this year. Try to make the shootout bigger and, and make it better you know that's one of my personal goals is just to make it better you know i, I have such a good time at that event that i just want to see it grow you know i've been talking to uh d sport and and a uh, few of the sponsors that i know and and just try to make it better you know i'm trying to get spoke to miles at english racing trying to get them back out there and pick their brain and a couple close friends like bean uh keith from Bean Fab, yeah. he's going to come out this year. Uh, Ricky at Pro Bearing, I spoke to him about coming out. Uh, maybe, maybe having a booth for his stuff out there. Just, just trying to, you know, grow it how I can. Because it's just, it's just such a good time. It just needs a couple people. If, if everyone can just bring one or two friends, it would be that much better Definitely. for everybody. Yeah, you know, it's not hard to bring one or two friends, and you know, whatever. Just do your, everyone do your best. Everyone just complains and says, you know. Oh, oh, I need more people. Listen, like, but what are you actually doing? You know, you got you got to do something to pitch in. So I'm trying to pitch in and spread the word and and get some other uh, get some other people out there. Call some people out. Exactly. Looking at you, Speed Factory. Yep. <laughs> come come beat us at our own event. I'm trying. He said he said it's. I spoke to James, and you know he said it's a little far. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. That's what he said. Uh, the there's, a, there's a lot of people on the East Coast that should be able to make it, you know. It's yeah. just timing, logistics, you know. But it would be great to have, you know, open it up a little bit to get a few more people in there. There's, there's a lot of empty seats there that could be uh, that could be filled with people. Got to do it big for the 30th. Yes. Oh, that's right. It's the 30th. Yeah. You're going to have to get a DJ probably for that. We'll make we'll make it better, man. Yep. I have you know I'm always looking to try how to improve myself and have my car faster there, more reliable, more spare parts to so keep it going. You know we, we're gonna break out the chocolate fountain this year, so that'd be a good addition. Heck yeah. Yep. So you, you know the fried Oreos were a hit, so. Yep. You have to buy a couple of cases more. Can't, of that. Yeah, can't miss out on those. <laughs> That's funny. But we have a good time, you know that. We just there's no reason why we can't have it grow a little bit. Yeah, definitely. So, so Rich, if somebody out there they bought a one G and they're looking to uh, kind of do the same thing you do, build a seven second car, what advice would you have them before they get started? <laughs> I mean, just you have to have fun with it, right? If you if you're not having fun, then get out because it's gonna it's gonna lead down a road that there's kind of no return at, at some point and uh you just you know if you're smart unlike me i'm not smart right i'll just keep going until whenever whenever <laughs> the well dries up i'll keep i'll keep going but if you're smart you gotta you know 
whatever the cost you're budgeting, you have to go another half because you need spares to keep it running. Spares of everything. You, yep. you can't just build a car and then that's it. Like now you got you, you need two of everything almost. You know, two engines, trans drivetrain, double sensors. Like everything needs you know anything that can break. You know you need two of. So you got to budget in for that, or you're in, you're in for a rocky road because the first time you take a hit, you're gonna not have you know not have the means or the funds to repair it, and yep. you're, you're gonna get discouraged, and you're gonna part it out, and you know whatnot, and you, you know you just got to be realistic with what you think you you can handle. You know you don't want to build that's three years long because you're not even gonna be into it by the time it's done. Yeah. You know me, uh, I'm a very impatient person. I, I like things like you know I want everything done in an hour because I don't. I don't like wasting time and I don't have a lot of time. So it's like, I can't race 30 weekends out of a year. So when I have a free weekend that I can plan, like I want to race. Right. If the car's not done or I'm waiting on a part, like no bueno, like I'm, I'm getting pissed. Yep. Because I only have a limited window of when I can race. So just be smart about your build and find good people. That's all. Don't, don't, if the person hasn't done it before and you have a goal that they don't know what you're talking about, find find another person. Yep. Somebody knows what you're talking about. Somebody knows what your goal you're you know you're trying to achieve. Talk to the people and at the top it. of the list. That's what Rich did. Yep, you know, that's it. I went and found the best. I mean, you know, you can't just go with who's close by. You know, right. it doesn't work like that. Not at this level. It doesn't. Maybe if you just want a manifold in the turbo and stuff, you could go anywhere. <laughs> but. If you're serious, you might have to drive, you know, Rafe's three and a half hours. This guy's 15 hours. This guy's, you know, whatever. Yeah. Whatever it takes. Got to do if what you got to do. you about it. So, uh, Rich, where can people find you on social media that they can uh, keep track of all your fun shenanigans and to see your car more and, uh, and to see the build? Really, it's really two, really basically two things. Facebook, it's Richard Ong. That's more of a... Uh, Half racing, half my kids. And then uh, we got Instagram, which is at Rich Hong. That's all car stuff, usually. <laughs> That's where you'll be able to find me. Yep. Find all the uh, f- the fun photos. The fun photos and the food. Yep. Don't forget the food. I-, I would almost say it's the best part. That's awesome, man. You don't even need a car, right? That's right. Show up and eat and hang out. Show up, eat, and hang out. Talk, Talk to, to all the superstars like Warren. Yep. Get to do Warren's, uh, uh, my my Warren's one of my good buddies, professional bodybuilder. For those that don't know, he just does car ra- he does car racing on the side. I thought his cousin was the professional bodybuilder, and and he nah, was- his cousin's like an amateur race car driver. He breaks all the parts, <laughs> but Warren Warren is the professional bodybuilder. Ah, got it. That clears yeah. it up. Yep. All right, Rich. Finally, I always give people a chance to. Uh, say thanks or give a shout out to anybody who's helped them uh, get where they are. Is there anybody you want to give a thanks to? Yeah, definitely. There's a long list to uh, people for that helped me out. Uh, we got Don, Aaron, Tony, Big Joe, and Martin. These guys are always getting me to the track. I couldn't do any of this without their help. Uh, Hal and Logan at Dynasty for taking care of me. Rafe and Jocelyn at RRT. Uh, Phillips at Pro Dipper. We got something something cool coming up for you guys to see. Uh, Ricky at Pro Bearing. We got the Michigan crew, the Wild Boys crew, uh, Bucci and FP. We got Andrew at Boosting Photography, always making me look good. Uh, John and Nate at Performance Part Out. They always give me all the parts I need to keep this thing running. Uh, Dave at Head Games, Paul at NatFab, and finally you. You give us something to look look forward to every week, and uh, I'm always li- listening. Uh, can't wait for your next shows and your episodes. Well, I appreciate so I thank that. you for doing that. Yeah, no problem. You push me, man. You make you, you put the list down, and you make me want to climb that list. So yeah. you, de- you definitely play a, a role in it because uh, I'm a competitive kind of guy. Love to hear that. All right, Rich. Well, hey, thanks for coming on here. And uh, of course, man, I, I, I'm just counting down the days until I get to hang out with you again. Awesome, man. It'll be soon. All right. Well, uh, we're looking forward to another update. You'll have it soon. Hopefully, in two months. All right. Sounds good. I'll talk to you soon. I appreciate it, buddy. Yep. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Mitsu Times podcast. 
Check out our Instagram and Facebook for daily updates. Get added to our list by going to mitsutimes.org and clicking Submit a Slip. Thank you to all of our sponsors.